Hi, how's it going? In this video, we are going to start with a big refactor. It's not that big. And then we're going to finish off the swap chain. I know what you're saying. Hey, wasn't the swap chain done? Well, the images were created by the swap chain and those swap chain images were retrieved. But in Vulkan, we don't sort of directly talk to an image. We have what's called an image view, which is sort of like a protocol for addressing that image. Actually, in a full system, we would have um, a trifecta. We would have the image, the image view, and also the image memory. However, in this case, the image memory is taken care of, uh, uh, is taken care of for us. So no issues there. But anyway, onto that refactor. So a lot of the code is here in this device file and it's actually getting to the point where we can probably break it out into separate things for one thing the q family indices we can put them in their own files so we'll go ahead and make that we'll call it uh, q families and we'll just grab any q family stuff from here and throw it into the file Okay, so we'll just go through the usual stuff. We will need to import um, our config file that has our Vulkan and GLFW definitions. Well, that's where we import them. So that comes in there. That is fine. That's looking great. And then we'll need to go back to our original file device and just look for anything with an L. Oh, of course, we have to do this. We'll have to go um, import Q families. Go back anywhere where there is an error. Okay. So here we'll just go reference that from the Q families package module. Same here. And the same over here. Awesome. Okay. The next thing I want to do is I want to take this swap chain stuff and put it in its own file. So we'll make a swap chain dot pi and we'll throw everything in there. So this bundle can go in there. And down the bottom we have these swap chain functions. So query swap chain support all the way down to the end, grab all of that. Okay, and we'll just do the imports. So probably just grab all of this. Okay, great. So onto the stuff that I want to sort of work on now, and that's the, the new stuff. So at the moment, see, we have this set of images here um, bundled up in our swap chain. Actually, I don't just want that. I want a set of, I'm going to call them frames. And in order to do this, I'll pop over to the, well, I'll make a new one. I'll make uh, frame.py. And in there, I'll define sort of a, a simple class, which will hold everything. Okay, cool. So um, at the moment, um, every thing representing a, an image on our swap chain will be the image and a view of that image. Again, if we were allocating this memory ourselves, we would also have an image memory field. Um, later on, when we get into some more advanced drawing, then we'll have synchronization structures added to this as well. So. Yeah, but we don't need to worry about that at this point in time. All we need is right now, our frames is some sort of list, which starts off as empty. And what we'll do is we'll be putting on those swap chain frames. So we'll go import frame. All right, so now down to 
constructing that. So we have this. What I'm going to do is I'm going to make this a temporary variable. And go through. So um, again, this grabs the set of images which have been allocated by the GPU. And then what we want to do is we want to look through the images, construct an image view for each image, and then store all of that information into a frame, and then put that frame onto the, uh, the bundle, if that makes sense. So just to keep things super simple, we'll go, okay, make a swap chain frame. Okay, we'll set the image and then append that to the set of frames. And that's an example of how we do that. How we do that. Um, the other thing is we need to actually create the image view. Now there's quite a little bit, quite a bit involved here. Um, to start with, we'll make the creation info. Let's give this a second. Okay. So we have this structure type, which has a default value. We don't need to put anything in here. We have this pointer to the next thing, which by default is none. So that's great. Flags, we don't need to worry about that. Image, we do need to set that. So we'll say image is the image from this loop, the temporary variable there. Uh, the view type, uh, what is it? It's Vulcan image. You give this a second to fill in. Two dimensional. So as you can see here, we have one dimensional images. What would that look like? I don't know. Uh, three dimensional images. We have array images like medical imaging. You have sort of layers. We have cube maps and all of that. And I'm just going to set this to a two dimensional image. Okay. Format. No worries. Um, format will be the same format that our swap chain has, which is down here. Okay, components, this gets a little trickier. This is sort of a, a composite structure here, so we'll need to sort of create that ourselves. We'll get back to that. Uh, sub resource range, again, this is slightly more involved as well. Equals something, we'll, we'll get to that right now. Okay, so components. Component mapping. So the components of an image are red, green, blue, and alpha. But um, there's no guarantee that we're not going to take this for granted. So yeah, I mean, it would make sense if we have red, green, and blue, red, green, blue, and alpha in that order. But <clears throat> we might for some reason want to just jumble things around and say, hey, to read the red, <coughs> sorry, to read the red of the image, go and look at the blue data, which is stored there, um, which that's nuts. We're not going to do that, um, but here's what we can do. We can go um, VK component swizzle. We have all these options. So for red, we could swizzle A, and that'd be grabbing the alpha data from the image and presenting that as the red. I'm just going to go with swizzle identity for all of these. Swizzle, by the way, is when you have a sort of vector and you pick one component individually from it. So we're just gonna go with this. Okay, so that's that. We can pass that in as our components. Then we need to get our sub resource range. So we could have a really large image and be viewing only certain parts of it. We could also have we could also have a MIP map. So yeah, the image is the image, but then the uh, image consists of many sort of downsampled MIP maps. We could have any one of those to sample from. We could have an arrayed image. So we have array layers. We're accessing different layers. Um, so anyway, sub resource range. There we go, VK image, sub resource range. And then look in here, what do we have? We have aspect mask. So which component are we accessing? Is it depth, stencil, whatever? Um, and then we have uh, MIP mapping info, and then we have 
array layer info. Okay, so anyway. Yeah, so these are all the things which we could view. Heaps of things, maybe not that many. We're gonna view the color in this case. Let's give that a second. Okay, cool. So uh, we have no MIP mapping on our swap chain. <laughs> That'd be weird. Um, no, we have no MIP mapping, so we don't need to worry about, um, yeah, we just set base level zero. There's only one level. It's just the default image that we see. And the same thing with um, array. We do not have image arrays. Okay, so we, we've constructed that. We can pass that in, give it a second. And that's looking good. Okay, so then what we need to do is we say, okay. Create image. Okay. And give it a second. We need a device. So we'll say device equals, I think I had it up above. That logical device. I think that's all right. Um, the pointer to the create info is that create info that we made up above and the pointer to the allocator. We're not going to have a custom memory allocator. We're just going to go with Vulkan's default. Okay. So we set that up. We can set uh, our <laughs> swap chain frame is now completely defined and we can append it to the bundle. Okay, so then we need to just pop back to our class. So I think that's in main. Here we have it. Probably a good idea to import the stuff that we need. Import swap chain and frame. Why not? We probably don't need Q families. What? What do you mean? Yeah, there we go. Okay, it just takes a while to lint it all up. Okay, so. make device yeah device creates swap chain that's not right it should be that function is now within the swap chain module okay uh, swap chain images that's not right that should be swap chain frames yep that's good okay and we can sort of run that now and see what happens huh That should be create image view. I don't know why that didn't work. Why did it do that? All right. Double check. Yep. Device. We've got that. Pointer create info. We've got that. Pointer view. Uh, no, sorry. Pointer allocator. We've got that. Now point of view. Again, we don't need that because we are by default. It's sort of creating it and returning it. That's fine. Okay. Uh, it's it's sort of the, the C style to put a pointer to the thing that you want to allocate as an argument to the function. It runs its thing, it allocates it in that pointer, and then you have it after the function ends. But we're not, that's not the C style, not Python style. Let's try this again. Okay, so it runs and everything, and it looks like it's going just fine. Then it complains that we need to destroy the image views. Okay, fair enough. So the swap chain allocates the memory. When we destroy the swap chain, it frees that memory. We also need to free the image views, which we created. So we go through our frame. So we'll go for frame. Destroy the image view. And the arguments we take are the device, the image view, which will be the frame image view and the allocator, which in this case is a D allocator, is none. Okay, let's try that again. Ah, oh, sorry. Python complains, if I name this argument, then nothing after it can be named. 
And the reason for that is it sort of takes, if I named none of these arguments, I could just write them in order, that would be fine. If I named the last argument, that would be fine. But when we name an argument, it sort of takes the arguments after it sort of out of order. It doesn't really understand. Okay, so let's do that again. There it is, and it's gone um, with no errors. So that's awesome. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed this session. Again, in this session, what we did is we looked at the basic components of an image, which is the image itself and the image view. And again, if we weren't automatically allocating this, we would have to allocate image memory as well. And where the image memory is allocated is important. And we sort of refactored our code, made it more modular. Always got to leave the code a little cleaner than it was when we started. And yeah, we're learning how Vulkan works under the hood. Anyway, hope you had fun and I'll see you again soon. Bye.